Want to make your own control arms without changing your factory suspension geometry? A control arm jig will help you do just that. On a control arm, the placement of the bushings and the ball joint determines how the suspension operates. If you want custom control arms that work just like the factory ones did, the bushings and ball joints need to be in the exact same position. With the bushings and ball joints in the right place, everything in between isn't as important. It needs to be strong enough to do its job, and it needs to be able to clear the wheel and the frame, but the material used and the shape doesn't matter a whole lot. Make a titanium starfish control arm, or an aluminum heart-shaped one. Let your imagination do imagine things. What if there was a magic device that could be adjusted to fit a factory control arm, and then hold new bushings and ball joints in the perfect position while building a new arm. If you only need to copy a single set of control arms, don't let this fancy jig intimidate you. It's not necessary. A jig can be as simple as a plate with tabs welded to it. I put in a lot of extra effort to make my jig adjustable because I wanted one machine that could adapt to any control arm a customer threw at me. To make an adjustable jig like this one, you need to start with two sizes of square tube that fit together snugly, sometimes referred to as telescoping. One and a half inch square with one eighth inch thick wall fits nicely over one and a quarter inch tubing. The smaller tubing will be used to create a T-shape. Don't weld them together yet though. We're going to make the vertical piece movable. The vertical section of the T should be a little longer than any control arm you'll ever want to build. And the horizontal piece should be a little wider than the bushings on the widest control arm you'll ever want to build. The larger tubing will be used to create a series of sliding components. One for the ball joint, four for the bushings, and one will be used to allow the vertical part of the T to slide. So feel free to cut out a bunch of these you'll need at least six sleeves to copy my jig. My sliding sleeves are about one and a half inches long. After cutting your small piece of inch and a half square tube, you will find that it doesn't quite fit over your inch and a quarter tube the way I said it would. Normally, your inch and a half square tube will not fit over your inch and a quarter tube because there is a weld bead inside that usually keeps the two from sliding over one another. This is the first time I've never had to get rid of that bead. So if you're not as lucky as I am, I'll show you next a couple ways that I get rid of that weld bead. A hand file will get the job done if you don't have access to power tools, or if you just prefer to work really hard at something and not make much progress. A carbide burr in a die grinder or a drill would be fantastic but my favorite method is to measure the inside dimensions of the square tubing and run that size hole saw through it. This only works if the weld is at least close to the center of the tubing. Once you have this simple operation figured out, you can move on to creating your adjustable control arm jig. The upper section of the T has four sliding bushing tabs. These were made specifically for the 9 16th inch bolts I use most often. This allows the machine to adapt to the width and the position of the bushings. The sliding tabs also have set screws to lock them in place. Making these tabs was pretty simple. Using one and a half inch flat bar, I created four pieces of identical length and drilled 9 16 inch holes through all of them. Then, using a 90 degree magnet, I welded them to the tops of the sliding sleeves. The upright of the T is also on a sliding sleeve, which allows me to change the position of the ball joint left and right between the bushings. Then I can lock it down with a set screw. I don't know why I used the biggest bolt I could find. It doesn't match and it makes my OCD ache. If you can weld two pieces of square tube into a T shape with a 90 degree magnet, do that. But first, slip a sliding sleeve in between them. The only piece left to make is the piece that holds the ball joint. So that's the sliding sleeve we're going to make right now. I need to create something to secure the ball joint's tapered stud. When the ball joint is installed on the vehicle, it sits in a solid chunk of steel with a tapered hole. But do you have a tapered drill bit? I don't. 
Luckily, I don't think it's required. Let's try this instead. Measure the widest part of the taper and find some square tubing a little larger than that. My ball joint measures three quarter inch at the widest point, so one inch square will do fine. Drill a pilot hole all the way through the square tube and on one side, open that hole just big enough for the threads to slide in. A step bit works great for this if you don't want to measure stuff. On the other side, open the hole until the taper drops in and the threads pop out on the other side. Don't drill it too big or it won't be snug. Weld this piece to your sliding sleeve, install a set screw, and you're done. Using the jig is about as simple as it gets. Loosen all the set screws and slide the pieces around until the tabs are snug against the bushings and insert the bolts. Slide the ball joint fixture until the taper drops in and install the nut. Lightly tighten all the set screws and you can remove the control arm. This jig is now set up to duplicate this arm, but that's not happening until next time. I'm waiting on some parts for the custom control arms, so I've got to cut this one short, really short. So until then, my friends, keep moving forward.